So now that we've done um, an introduction to the user interface, I'm going to go over some of the basic modeling in Matrix Gold. So if people have, um, if you're a new user who hasn't used any 3D program, um, this is basically for you. For those that have used, um, let's say, Rhino, which is the main platform for Matrix Gold, uh, you don't need to watch this video. This is very uh, basic. So when modeling in matrix, um, you're going to need to understand there are three types of objects and um, that you can model with one it being lines. Um, followed by surfaces and then solids. So as you can see here, I've drawn three lines and what I can do is turn them into, so like these two here, I'm going to turn them into surfaces and change the shaded so you can see them. So this is what we call a surface. So we have lines again, right? So let me draw a rectangle. So that's a, a curve and these curves can be converted to um, surfaces or solids. So I had turned this uh, single line curve into a surface and I'm going to turn these two curves into a solid. So I'm going to do a extrude planar curve and now these uh, two curves are now uh, two solid objects. Now with uh, modeling there are there's a concept of open and closed. So when a curve is opened, so example, if I draw a polyline, I do that. Open curves are when the end and start of a curve don't meet up. That is an open curve. So these two don't meet, therefore this is open. If I were to have drawn this and my start and end points, uh, sorry, ends of the curve meet, this is a closed curve. Um, another way of looking at it, so there's something here called properties. So if I click on this object, it's going to say here, um, this is a planar closed curve. If I click on this, this is a planar open curve. If I click this object here, this is what we call closed poly surface. Um, along with this, if I click on this one, this is just a surface. So when I clicked on this, it said a closed poly surface. So what it means is poly surface is more than one surface. And even though it's more than one surface, it's closed. So when you want to, the reason why we model in um, major schools is because we're trying to create something that can be a physical object. Now, for something to be a physical object, it must be a closed poly surface. So this object and this object are both closed poly surfaces. So these can hypothetically be 3D printed and uh, manufactured. This here, on the other hand, which is just a surface, cannot be because this uh, surface, although we can see it on the viewport on the computer, it's um, it has no thickness to it. So because there's no thickness, it can't be um, manufacturable. If you look at a piece of paper, a piece of paper has thickness. So this object has no thickness, therefore it can't be made. Um, another way to look at it is whether um, something is watertight. So if I were to hypothetically pour water over this, water should not be able to go into this object because this is what we call uh, watertight or it's a closed poly surface. If I were to turn this into a open poly surface, so I just remove the uh, top surface here and I click this, now this is an open poly surface. If I were to pour water on this object, it would um, 
hypothetically go in here and then this would not be uh, uh, manufacturable three or 3d printable so we went through curves um, surfaces solids uh, between open and closed curves and open and closed poly surfaces um, another term that I don't know if you saw but if I click this out it says planar closed curve so another term that is used is planar. Planar means flat. So um, if I were to draw a non-planar curve, so this is where it's good to use the um, four viewports. So if I were to draw a curve in my top view, right? And then go to my front view and then change the uh, angle Let's go back to perspective you can see that this curve um, bends and arcs in three dimensions if i were to draw a planar curve so let's draw a circle curve this curve is flat so if i look at it through the front view you can see it's flat and then also in the right view it's flat um, it just has curvature in the top view so any curve that is um that has curvature in only one of the viewports or one plane, then it's planar. If it's uh, if it curves in multiple viewports or in multiple dimensions or planes, then it's no longer planar. So sometimes when you're we're working in matrix world, um, you're trying to do something, the program would probably tell you or give you a error saying that the object is not planar or um it's unable to do something because the something's not planar so just an example i guess um if i were to draw a circle a solid extrude and then both sides no solid no so if i draw this curve um, I know that this opening is planar and this opening is planar because if I look at it from the top view, this is a circle, but this top and this bottom are technically planar. If I go and I want to close this, then there's a tool called cap planar. And then I'll cap that, it'll close it off. And then once it's closed off, then this is printable. If this was not planar, for some reason, it couldn't cap it. So let's... Grab these points. Okay, so now this side is no longer planar, but the bottom is planar. If I go and try to cap it, I'll close it, cap planar, it only capped the bottom, it didn't cap the top. And that's because the, the top here is not planar. And if I read in the command, um, one attempted object is still open, the opening did not have a closed planar loop of edges. So basically the command line is telling me that Okay, we tried to cap it, it capped the one side, but the other side didn't cap because it's not planar. And um, if you don't know what planar is, then you wouldn't know what the problem is. Um, some other things to kind of know how to use while you're modeling is selecting objects. So I'm gonna throw in a couple spheres in here again. So to select objects, you can just simply uh, left click and it will select the objects. You can see it kind of highlight uh, cyan. If, if you left click, you can only select one object at a time. So to select multiple objects, you can hold down shift on the keyboard and select multiple objects. 
to unselect an object, you can hold control and that will unselect an object. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to select multiple objects at once, you can do something what we call box selecting. So if I drag, um, left click and drag, I'll create this uh, box. Now, as you can see here, when I go drag this from uh, right to left, this is a dotted box. If I drag from um, left to right, this box is solid. Now, depending on whether you select with a solid or a dotted box, um, it does two different things. So if I select um, going from right to left where it's a dotted box, as long as the object is partially within this box, it will select that object. If you do it the other way from left to right and it's solid, the entire um, object has to be within the box to be selected. So as you can see here, I have um, one full circle and two spheres, sorry, spheres. So I have one sphere within the box, but two spheres partially in the box. It won't select the, the two spheres that are partially in. It'll only select the one that's fully enclosed. So the nice thing about this, if you were trying to select something specific, um, this might be helpful to select certain objects depending on um, how close they are in proximity. Okay, so that's selecting. And you can do the same thing with the uh, shift. So I can box select this and then box select this using shift. And then if I hold control, I can unselect. Uh, moving on, so now that we know how to select objects, um, understand a little bit of the terminology, the next one is I want to talk about is called gumball. So once you select an object, if you have gumball turned on, you're going to see these arrows pop up. So down here at the bottom, um, if you do not see the gumball appear, uh, you need to turn this on right here. And this, if I turn it off, you can see the gumball disappears. Turn it on, the gumball appears. The gumball allows you to select an object and move it on a particular axis. So if I look here in my top view in the bottom left of the viewport, you can see that there's um, uh, axes here. So this is in the top view. The top view works in, so you. Like we were saying before, uh, the top view, front view, and right view are 3D, um, or actually, so there are three planes, and those three planes give you a perspective view. The planes are um, designated here. So the top view is the X, Y, and then front view is the um, Z and X, and then right view is Z and Y. And then these three planes give you the world coordinates. Um, so the gumball, the arrows are, um, they appear uh, the same as the axis that you're, uh, that you can move it in. So if I were to select this blue arrow, I'm moving along the Z axis. So I can drag this up and down. Um, there's also, so there's a red arrow so that, uh, will allow you to drag it um, left and right in this viewport, which is the Z, sorry, not Z, X, and then combine. So if I hover over to this square here, this allows me to move the object in um, the 2D plane. So the reason why I say it's for beginners to use the um, four viewports so if I want to move this, if you don't have an understanding or feel of um, kind of like the planes, it's going to be hard to move the object around without knowing the planes. So if I want to move this over, um, I can look at it from the top and then slide it left and right or up and down on the Y and X. And then if I want to move it along the Z, I can go to my front view and then kind of readjust but if I was in um, perspective, it's kind of hard to know where I'm moving the object. It, 
so for me, I just kind of have a, I guess through experience, I know I just angle the, the screen to the, um, kind of like the position that you would have in the other views. And then I would move the object in that plane using the gumball. So the gumball not only allows you to move objects um, on an axis, it will also allow you to rotate on an axis. So if you look at this, uh, the blue, which is Z, and then uh, this uh, handle here, which is curved, it's allowing me to rotate along the, using the uh, Z axis as the um, center of rotation. And then on the opposite side of the arrow, we have this dotted line, which ends at uh, a blue box. So that blue box, if I grab that and drag it, allow me to scale in the 1D. If I hold shift, I can scale in three dimensions. So I would suggest taking the time to um, if you can maybe throw in some spheres like this, so I'll read the command line. So if I click the sphere, it'll say center of sphere. So I can click anywhere, drag out, which is going to be the diameter or size of the sphere. And then you're going to create that sphere. And then once you create, um, a couple of these. You can practice moving them around with the gumball.